The brand new Macs are here and so is our iPhone 12 giveaway. So if you wanna win an iPhone 12, the full details are in the description box down below. Right, so in the previous video, uh, I covered 30 things you need to know about the MacBook Pro, the M1, the 2020, you know, the new Apple Silicon MacBook Pro. And this video is all about the MacBook Air covering not five, not 10, not 30, but 25 things you need to know about the MacBook Air. So get us next, ready, sit back, relax, and enjoy. So at number one, the MacBook Air has always had a really good battery life, but now it is better than ever, with the MacBook Air lasting six hours longer than before to up to 18 hours of battery life compared to 12. Now this is a massive, massive improvement. So if you need a Mac with a great battery life, then the MacBook Air is for you. However, the MacBook Pro does have a slightly better battery life to up to 20 hours now compared to 18 on the Air. And did you guys know that the MacBook Air also got a brand new keyboard? So even though this is the same scissor style mechanism, so the key travel is the same as before, which is great because the previous keyboard was amazing following the uh, disaster that a butterfly keyboard was. Um, now we do have some changes this year, which is in terms of the layout of some of the function keys. So we have a brand new spotlight key, a dictation key, and a do not disturb key. And some of the previous keys are gone, such as the launch pad, that's gone. Uh, and the keyboard brightness keys are also gone up and down. Now you can control the brightness through uh, the control center, so that's probably why Apple has removed these. Uh, but there you go, three keys less and three new keys that replaced them. Oh, and the MacBook Pro gets two escape keys because, you know, this is a Pro device, so why not? Other than that, we actually do get some display improvements on the MacBook Air, which I was not expecting to see. So we get a P3 color gamut support now with 25% more colors than the previous gen MacBook Air, which means that you can now finally use this display for editing photos and even videos um, at the same quality as on a MacBook Pro. This was one of the reasons why I didn't actually get a MacBook Air because I wanted those extra colors uh, for editing photos on the MacBook Pro. Uh, but now the air is basically just the same, or almost the same, uh, because it does have a slightly dimmer display, 400 nits compared to 500 on uh, the MacBook Pro, and then the iPad Pros come with 600 nits, so if you plan on using your MacBook outdoors a lot, uh, then uh, the display won't be as bright as an iPad Pro or even a MacBook Pro. But I would say that the biggest upgrade that a MacBook Air gets is support for iOS apps. So because we have essentially the same processor, uh, the same architecture at least as in the iPhones and the iPads, it can now natively run iOS apps. So you can just boot up the, uh, you can just launch the Mac App Store and you'll be able to find all the iOS apps that you want and just install them there. Now, the only thing that you'd probably be aware of here is that developers can turn off support uh, for their apps in macOS. So a few apps won't be supported, but by default, most apps will. Now, speaking of apps, all the Apple apps, including Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro 10, they've all been uh, rewritten from scratch for ARM, the brand new architecture that the Apple Silicon chip, the M1, is using. So those apps will run extremely, extremely fast. Now, the other apps, so the third-party apps, all the other ones now, they will still be Intel uh, compiled for Intel processors and then emulated through Rosetta 2. So those apps will theoretically run slower. However, Apple has stated that some third-party apps will actually run faster through emulation than natively on Intel processors. Now, if you're buying a MacBook Air, well, uh, it's literally just air now. Well, mostly. The fan is actually gone, which is quite ironic. Like the only thing that blows air uh, out of the laptop is, is now gone in the MacBook Air. Um, so the brand new M1 chip is actually a fanless design chip, just like the 12-inch MacBook was. Um, and the upside of this is that there's no noise. Just like on the iPads, you won't hear any fan noise or anything. However, the performance will be a bit weaker than compared to the MacBook Pro, which even though it has the same chip, it does have a fan inside. And we also get a new camera, kind of. So even though the sensor is the same 720p sensor, unfortunately, uh, we do actually get a brand new image signal processor, or ISP, thanks to the new M1 chip, which is quite similar to what we have on the iPhones and the iPads, which means that even though we have the same sensor, the dynamic range, the exposure, the noise reduction, uh, all of that will be quite a bit better uh, than on the previous MacBooks. And even though the amount of customization that you can do when it comes to ordering your MacBook has dropped quite a bit, as you can only configure the storage and the RAM now, uh, the MacBook Air actually features a customizable GPU. So in a way, you kind of have two GPU options to choose from. They're both uh, in the same SOC, the M1, 
but one is a seven core GPU, the other one is an eight core. Long story short, when you manufacture processors, uh, the yield is quite, well, quite a bit lower than compared to other uh, components. Luckily, in a lot of cases, these uh, lower quality chips actually get rebranded and they get uh, sold and repackaged as a different uh, product. For example, same thing applies with the GPUs at 2080, 2070, and 2060. They're all 2080s, uh, but the 2060 and 2017s are essentially lower quality bin versions of the 2080. And the same thing applies to uh, the seven core model of the M1 chip in the baseline MacBook Air. Yeah, it's just a lower quality chip that wasn't functioning as well as the higher end one. So Apple just disabled one GPU core because of that and now sells it at a lower price. How much lower? Well, it's actually $50 lower if you configure the storage to match the next configuration of the MacBook Air. Now let's talk about CPU performance a bit. So in the new MacBook Air, we now have a pretty gigantic improvement, up to three point times faster CPU wise than the previous gen 2020 MacBook Air. Now, Apple claims that compared to Windows laptops, the new MacBook Air is three times faster than the best-selling Windows laptop at that price point. But they haven't really said which model. You know, usually the best-selling Windows laptops are not necessarily the most powerful ones. So it's probably a very lightweight laptop. I'm not sure which model, because they haven't said I couldn't find anywhere. Um, so it is a bit dodgy that they haven't said it. And they also claim that it is faster, the MacBook Air, than 98% of Windows laptops. Now, considering that the iPad Pro, even the 2018 model, was actually faster in benchmarks and real world use than my 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro, it does make sense that the new MacBook Air and the new MacBook Pros, which have a custom made uh, MacBook processor, will be faster than that iPad Pro and significantly faster than this. So the Air now has an eight core CPU, uh, but it works in a very interesting way. So unlike the Intel CPUs where we have, you know, eight cores of mostly the same uh, clock speeds, aside from maybe one core which can turbo boost higher. Uh, here we have four high performance cores and then four energy efficient cores. And Apple claimed that those four energy efficient cores are actually faster than the 2020 baseline MacBook Air. And the usage of those cores will depend on the app that you're using. So when you're browsing the web or just in Finder, uh, that's when those four energy efficient cores will be used. Whereas uh, when you're in a game or rendering something, that's when those four high performance cores will be used. So I wouldn't really call this an eight core CPU. It's more of like a, a dual quad core, if you get what I mean. Now, GPU performance has been improved even more. So the new MacBook Air is five times faster GPU wise than the previous 2020 MacBook Air. And we also have an eight core GPU. And thanks to this, you can now edit and render 4K videos in Final Cut Pro, which you could also do before, by the way, uh, but apparently you can have more streams of 4K videos now. Um, and when it comes to gaming, you can game at higher settings uh, and graphic options and frame rates and all of that, which is pretty awesome because the GPU inside all of these Macs, uh, you know, they weren't great, especially the integrated ones. Speaking of integration, um, since this new processor is essentially an SOC, the M1, a lot of components that you would normally find on the logic board are now integrated into the chip itself, including the RAM which means that both the CPU and the GPU actually make use of that RAM inside the SOC, which means that the more RAM you have, the more video memory you'll also have. So if you wanna upgrade the GPU, fun fact, you can actually upgrade the amount of RAM uh, at you know purchase. So if you get 16 gigabytes of RAM, then your GPU will have twice the video memory. Well, actually less than twice because the OS will always need a bit of uh, memory to run, but you know, you get the idea. The GPU will have more memory out of that chunk to use. And we also get much faster machine learning computations, 11 times faster, and we also have a 16 core neural engine now. So if you're the kind of person that runs a lot of simulation uh, apps and a lot of scientific apps and even development, uh, on your Mac, then the MacBook Air will be quite a bit faster, well, 11 times faster at compiling code than the previous generation. So the real question is, should you get the MacBook Air over the MacBook Pro? And the thing is, if you've seen the MacBook Pro video, you probably know that there's not that many differences between the two. So the Air costs $1,000, the Pro costs $1,300. And essentially you're paying $300 on the Pro for the touch bar, for a two hour longer battery life, um, slightly better sustained performance and speakers and microphones which are a bit better on the Pro, but other than that, they're basically the same, mostly. And I would say that for most people, the Air is an even better deal now, so 
I would just go for the Air, to be honest. Um, personally, I'm still gonna go for the Pro because I like the touch bar, but other than that, the Air is still an amazing choice. Now, something that I found is that you can only connect apparently just one single external display to any of the Macs with uh, the M1 chip through those Thunderbolt ports. The only exception is the Mac Mini, which can support one display through Thunderbolt and then another one through the HDMI ports, but the MacBooks do not have that HDMI ports. Um, so I'll need to wait until we actually get those uh, Macs in hand next week. Uh, to test if that's really the case, but this is something that you should keep in mind. I use two monitors and if I won't be able to use two monitors with these new Macs, then uh, this will be a bit of an issue for me. Oh, well, speaking of issues, um, eGPUs are no longer supported. So if you're the kind of person that had a bunch of eGPUs lying around and this was your workflow, unfortunately, this is not supported at all on the M1 Macs. Why? Well, my guess is that Apple just wants to be fully, fully independent. They don't want to rely on AMD for drivers, for eGPUs and that kind of stuff. They just want to do everything themselves, which makes sense. Um, so I would say if an eGPU will eventually launch, it will be an Apple-made GPU at some point in the future. But for now, uh, you'll have to rely on those integrated graphics, which are better than before but still not as good as an eGPU would have been in some cases. And did you guys know that the storage speed has also been improved on the MacBook Air? So it's twice as fast as before, um, and uh, the MacBook Air 2020 actually had about 1.5 gigabytes per second read, which means that this one has about uh, 3 gigabytes per second, or actually 3.3 uh, read speed, which is quite a big improvement. Now, the speakers are actually not as good as on the MacBook Pro, which do offer higher dynamic range. So if you care about the speakers, they're pretty good on the Air, but they're much better on the MacBook Pros. Same goes for the microphones. We have three microphones on the Air, which are good, uh, but we do not have those studio-grade microphones like we do on the MacBook Pro 13-inch, uh, which is the same as on the MacBook Pro 16-inch. So those are quite a bit better. Uh, personally, in this one, I still have three mics. Uh, this is a 2020 Intel model. Uh, they're pretty good. Honestly, I don't have any complaints, but if you plan on recording podcasts on your MacBook Pro, then you can actually do that with the internal microphones on the MacBook Pro and uh, the 16 inch, but not the Air. The good news is that the MacBook Air finally has Wi-Fi 6, which is something that we only had on the iPad Pros and the iPhones and not the Macs. Uh, long story short, Wi-Fi 6 offers significantly higher uh, speeds compared to Wi-Fi 5, but more importantly, it offers congestion management if you have a Wi-Fi 6 router uh, at home. So if you have loads of Wi-Fi 6 devices, they'll all run at really high speeds instead of being chugged by the other devices on the network. Oh, and if you want to buy a golden MacBook, well, still aluminium, but, you know, painted gold, um, in that case, you have to get a MacBook Air because the MacBook Pro doesn't have that. So there you go. The exclusive color gold only applies to the MacBook Air. And same goes for Apple stickers. The MacBook Air comes with color matching Apple stickers, which are exclusive to the Air. If we don't get this on the MacBook Pros, we do get this on the Mac Pro, but that's it. MacBook Air and Mac Pro, why? We do not know. Uh, Apple's consistency is really nice, but that's pretty much it. And the last point that I want to make is instant wake which is something that we had, but not fully had on the Mac. So uh, when your Mac was sleeping, you had to press a button and it would take like three seconds or four seconds for it to wake up. And even booting up was fairly slow. And especially um, when you logged in, like it takes me like 20 seconds to log in and just load because it's an encrypted drive. So that was really slow. Um, hopefully that's improved too, but the instant wake is definitely there now. So you just press a button and the display is instantly on, just like on the iPads and the iPhones. But yeah, this was pretty much it for this video. Check out the MacBook Pro video and definitely subscribe to the bell icon because we'll be doing loads of videos on these new Macs, including a Mac mini video, MacBook Pro versus Air, all of that. Uh, and then next week we're getting the actual Macs in the house. So stay tuned for that as well. Uh, other than that, this has been pretty much it. Thank you for watching. I'm Daniel. This has been Zen of Tech. Don't forget about the uh, iPhone 12 giveaway, which is still happening, and uh, the details are in the description box down below. But other than that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys uh, in the next one. Zen of Tech, signing out. Cheers.